What you're looking at here is my first slide, the introduction to my electronic scrapbook. And to make it electronic, I've got to insert something electronic like audio or video. And in this training video, it's going to be audio. I'm going to show you how you can insert, trim, fade, and bookmark it. So to insert audio, just come up here, click on the Insert tab. Come over to the Media Group, click on the Audio drop-down arrow, and there you go. You get two choices. You can either insert audio, well, if you have an audio file on your PC or your computer, or if you don't, you can record it, of course, if you have a microphone hooked up to your computer, because if you don't, no mic, well, you're not going to be able to record anything. Let's go ahead and do that first. Click on Record Audio. And what's the name of it? Oh, that's so generic. Let's go ahead and delete that and call it for what it is. That's right. I'm going to clap to myself. I'm going to have my own applause because when it comes to introducing myself, hey, somebody's got to cheer me on. And since nobody will, I'm going to do it myself. So to go ahead and record myself applauding, go ahead and click on that red circle right there. And when you click on it, it's going to start counting off the seconds. And so it's recording right now. So, oh, yay, yay. We got to get going and then click stop. And then to hear that back, to see if you like it, you can go ahead and click on the play button. It's going to start counting off the seconds, and so it's recording right now. So, oh, yay, yay. Okay, let's go ahead and stop that. I think I missed a clap. So to go ahead and re-record it, and just come over here, click on record, it starts back to zero. Oh, yay, yay. And then click stop, and then click play. And if I don't like that, click on re-record, and back and forth until finally, if you're good with what you got, Five seconds applause while I was talking a little bit. In any case, go ahead and click okie dokie, and there you go. You get a little speaker there that represents the recorded audio. It also will represent any inserted audio. We'll go over that in just a second, but right now, when you hover over the speaker, you get the play bar down below. When you hover off, it disappears. When you select the speaker and hover off, it stays up. So to go ahead and to go through the play bar down below, there's the play. In fact, when you hover over any one of these buttons here, it tells you what it's about and the shortcut keys. So this is to play and to pause. Go ahead and click on play. Click on record. It starts back to zero. And we, yay! And then pause. And then when you come over here, you can see somewhere in the timeline of the audio, you can click to jump right to it and play from that point on. Zero, and, and then pause it and just jump around and at any point that you'd like. And in fact, when I go to the end, it's about almost six seconds. And then you get the option to move back a quarter of a second with each click and then the shortcut keys accordingly in that pop up there and move forward. And then you've got the current time that we're at. And then you've got, when you hover over it, the option to either mute it or unmute it. Well, if I mute it by clicking on it, it drops the slider all the way down to the bottom. Click on it to unmute it. It goes almost to the top. If I really want to rock out my audience in the presentation, let's max it and click and drag it up. And that's pretty much it for this, but with it selected the speaker, you get its related contextual format and playback tabs up at the top that will give us more options. But before I do that, let's go ahead and delete this so that way you know how to delete your audio, whether it's recorded or inserted. And let me show you how you can insert an audio file from your computer. This one's recorded, so let's go ahead with the selected, the speaker that is, hit the delete key, and it's gone. And then to insert an audio file from your computer, up on the Insert tab, go to the Media Group, click on the Audio drop-down arrow, Audio from your computer, okay, PC to be politically correct, click on it, and it opens it up. And down below, it's looking for audio files with these extensions. What are extensions? Well, if you look here, I've got the name of my file. It's called Audio. Then it has a dot and then another name. Well, on most operating systems, Windows, it doesn't have it where it shows that extended name. And the extended name, or known as the extension, tells the operating system what program to open up this file in, and so it's hidden because if you mess with that and you change it, then the operating system won't know what program to open up the file in, and, well, that could be a mess. In any case, if you want to learn how to see the extensions, be able to change them if you've got some issues with the file that's not opening up in the correct program, you can watch my Windows training video on extensions. In any case, so it's looking for audio files with those extensions. And if you do have an audio file that doesn't have that extension and you think PowerPoint will still play it, then click on the drop-down arrow and choose All Files, and you'll see all the files. In any case, I'm sticking with audio files here, and it's still there. And double-clicking on it, and there's the speaker. And so with this selected, it's the same thing as when you're recording. You get the play bar. And in addition, as I mentioned up here, you get its related contextual format and playback tabs 
First of all, the Format tab. Now, the Format tab, if you watched earlier training videos on pictures, shapes, objects, you get pretty much the same thing. You get your corrections, color, artistic effects, and also picture styles. When you hover over it, you can see the speaker. Now, this is for the speaker, the reflected rounded rectangle. Well, I recommend that you watch those other training videos. For here, let's just keep it simple. And let me just do one, like picture effects for the speaker, because, I mean, it's a speaker. How much do you want to fancy it up for your audience? Let's go down to glow. And, you know, having a glowing speaker that's hot. It's a glow 11 point red accent color 1. Select it, click off, and, oh, that's on fire. Or it's glowing nice and warm. In any case, I'll let you go ahead and go through the formats, and you should be up to speed right now if you watched all my training videos on when it comes to formatting your objects, pictures, shapes, and so on using the Format tab. And then let's go to the Playback, and I'm going to go from left to right. So first off, you can go ahead and obviously play it as a preview, and then pause it, and it pauses right there. You can also add a bookmark, which whatever the current time is at will add a yellow circle to it. Click on it, and there you go. And you can see that when I hover over it, it says bookmark 1. And to get to it, Alt Home or Alt N to skip. What that means is if I'm past it and I want to jump back to this bookmark because, you know, the audience laughed and they said, oh, play that again. And so I want to get back to it really quick. All I have to do is hold down the Alt key and hit Home. Let me play it and go Alt Home, Alt Home, Alt Home, Alt Home, Home. See what I had to do? Alt Home, when it got past it at a certain point, like a half a second or more, it went back to the bookmark. But if it wasn't quite at a half a second and I hit Alt Home again, it went right to the beginning. And it's the same thing when you're going and you're playing and you want to be able to jump right to that bookmark. Well, you can see the shortcut keys are Alt End. So well, this may not, I'd have to do this really fast. Let me click at the beginning here. And then let's play Alt End. You see, it just jumped right to the bookmark. Now, usually when I add bookmarks, I don't know where in the heck I'm at. What's this? You know, 4.06. When I'm listening to it, I'll click on Add Bookmark when I hit that point that I think that the audience wants to hear back or that I want to play back again. So click Play, and then, okay, that sounds like where I want to go ahead and play at that point again. So I have two bookmarks. This one could be like, hey, the one that I want to emphasize throughout the presentation when I want to come back to the slide and say, let's play it again, but not from the beginning. And maybe this one is to play it back in case if the audience is like, well, I want to hear that again. I'm thinking from that point is where it really gets informative. Okay, it's a clap, but do you understand what I'm saying with any audio that you use, especially if it's long? Which brings up the next point. Well, before we go there, if I want to get rid of one of these, like this one right here, select it, come up here and remove it. Okay, now I just have one. And we'll go over this during the presentation when I actually give it to show you what it looks like because we're in the design view, as it were. We're not actually in the presentation view, but let's go through the rest and then I'll show you. Come back up here and you can trim the audio. So click on it, opens it up, and you can cut off the first part of it and the last part of it by clicking and dragging the end and start time bars in. And if you want to get more persnickety, you can use the spin dials and go to one second, or you can come in here and get really persnickety, if I can use that word so loosely, and actually type it in. And so let's just do, well, let's do this one. Of course, you can go ahead and advance it with these back and forward arrows. And, well, I'll just use the spin dial. And let's just go to six. Okay. And then click Okie Dokie, and it trims it, and it adjusts it, and this bookmark is appearing closer to the end because we cut off a second from the end, about that much. In any case, when I play it, I have less now, and of course I can always go back to it and say, huh, we better bring it back all the way to the beginning and hear it from the beginning and all the way out to the end. So it doesn't permanently clip it off, just temporarily click Cancel. And then you've got the fade options, in and out. So if you've got audio that just comes out blaring right off the bat, I mean, you don't want to jar your audience, do you? Oh, maybe you do. In any case, you can go ahead and tick mark it up to like a second. So it goes from zero, and it has a second to bring it up to the normal level. And if the normal level is really jarring, you may want to push that out a bit more so it's softer, so it delays a little bit more before it gets up to that heightened place where it plays it at normally. And then fade out, you know, instead of just stopping abruptly, you can give your audience a warning that we're just about to end with it going, uh, you can do maybe two seconds. 
So, wow, let's see, what do I got here? So we're about five seconds, so it would start at about three seconds and playing it right on out. In fact, let's do two. So with it set like that, if I go ahead and play it, okay, you probably didn't notice it like I did. I mean, two seconds, probably not long enough to be able to get the feel for it, fading in or fading out, but there you go. And then next, audio options, the volume, when you click on it, it's set to high. And that's how it translates down here when you hover over the speaker. Okay, let me click off first, then hover over the speaker. It's at, that's high. That's not all the way to the max. So if you're up here thinking that that's the max, it's not. When you select medium, you hover over here, and there's medium. When I bring it low, click on it, that's low. So when you click high, and you're like, hmm, I wonder if that's high enough. Not quite. Click and drag that and below the speakers during the presentation to get really all the way to the top. And then next, you can start, well, you get three options, in-click sequence automatically or when clicked on. Automatically means that when I start the slideshow, it just starts playing. When clicked on, it means that during the slideshow, when I click on it, it'll start playing. In-click sequence means that, well, when I'm clicking and I've got a bunch of animation going on, other things, it depends on where this appears in the sequence, which we'll go over in a later training video. It just means if I have three clicks before it, because when I click here, it plays that. When I click here, it plays this animation. Then when I click again, it'll hit the audio. As far as what we're seeing here is that if I do in-click sequence, I don't have to click on the speaker. When the presentation begins, I can go ahead and just click once to advance to the next slide. But because this is in sequence, that would be second, and it would play, and then I could advance. Well, let me go ahead and come up here, click on insert. We need another slide, don't we? Click on new slide. Let's do a blank one. So we've got two. Let me go back to one. And then let's go ahead and take it for a test drive. Let's come down here and it's in click sequence. Click on slideshow. Okay. So there's the show. When I click, I didn't click on the speaker. My mouse, well, you got to see my mouse. It was over here. Okay. Let me start over again. Let's go ahead and hit the escape key and then let's play it. And then let me move my mouse around. See how I'm moving it. I'm not clicking on the speaker, but when I hover over it, you get the play bar, right? So if I don't click on it, but it's in sequence, when I click off of it, it's starting to play. So that's what it means in sequence, because I only have like basically one click before I go to the next slide, because the next click just advances to the next slide and everything on this slide disappears. So let me hit the escape key and let's go ahead and let's go back to slide one, select the speaker, come back up here to the playback tab and change it to say, when I do it automatically. So the moment I begin the presentation, it'll automatically play. Ready? Let's click on slideshow. Just automatically plays. Okay, hit the escape key. And then finally, it won't until I actually click on the speaker. All right, ready? Let's go ahead and begin slideshow. Click on it. Move my mouse around. There's the play bar. So when it says click on it, well, I'm adjusting it. It's not actually the speaker. It's when you hover over the speaker and you get the play bar, but clicking on the play button there. And then do alt home, alt home, alt home. Okay, if I do it too many times, that play bar just disappears, but it still remembers where I'm at and it'll take me to the beginning if I hit it fast enough and it doesn't get past. Well, let me hover over it. And this bookmark here. So Alt Home takes me there. If it's past it, Alt Home. Then if I hit it fast enough, Alt Home takes me to the beginning. And then of course you got your play options. If during the presentation you're like, oh, that's too loud, then you can, well, move your mouse around, hover over it, and then bring it down. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the escape key to get out of here. And let's come up here and let's see, play across slides. Well, what happens is when you go from one slide to the next, it'll automatically cut it off when it goes to the next slide. But if you want it to continue playing across the slide until it finally finishes, then check that. So let's go ahead and start this again. Click on it. And then let's click on it. See how we went to the next slide and it's still playing. Okay, so that's what that means. Hit the escape key. Let's go back to slide one. Select the speaker, playback. Play across all slides until it's done, or better yet, play across all slides, and then when it's done, loop it. Do it again until it's stopped, and then when it's stopped, play it again. And it'll keep playing and playing and playing. It's just crazy. I know. Let's go ahead and click play. And let's go ahead and click on the speaker. It's playing across all slides, and then it's looping again. Okay. 
that's enough of that. I don't want to keep playing that. I have to crank up the speakers real loud for you to hear it on your end. Let me go ahead and select the speaker. And this time the play bar, let me click on it. And then you'll notice that when I hovered over the speaker, it didn't bring up the play bar. I just clicked on it, started playing it. It's because we've got both of these boxes checked. And so we've got looped until stop, play across slides. You can rewind it after playing because when it's done playing, it just stays at the end. If you want to rewind it and get ready for a replay later on here, you can actually hide it during the show. So that way, if you select like automatically, see if this makes sense. Um, well, we won't play it across slides. But if it's done automatically, do you really need to see the speaker during it? No. Go ahead and check it. At least I don't. And then begin the slideshow. And then I just clicked and advance the next slide and it cut it off automatically. Because, let me go back to slide one, select the speaker, come back up here on playback. I unchecked play across all slides. And then over here you got no style. Click on it and it removes all the custom settings that we had and it goes to the default in click sequence which is new to PowerPoint 2016. PowerPoint 2013 only had automatically and when clicked on. So that's something new and fancy. And then play in background when you select that it automatically goes through and it checks the defaults for playing in the background. So it's automatically going to play. It's going to play across all slides and it will continue to play. I mean, playing in the background, that makes sense, and hide it during the slideshow. So, you know, if you have some sort of melodious thing, you're doing yoga and you're going through this and just breathe, breathe as you're going through the slides. You've got this music playing in the background with some subliminal message saying, buy more of Kurt's training videos. Give him thumbs up on YouTube. Keep buying more. In any case, you get what I'm saying. And then, of course, you can, you know, uncustomize that and check whatever you want or deselect it. So no style or if you want it to automatically just select the boxes for you to play in background continuously through all the slides throughout the entire presentation. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.